Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. So in the last episode we defeated Sith, Sith? Sith. And got the ring called the Covenant of Artorius, I believe. Yeah, so this will allow us to actually traverse the abyss, which means we can fight the boss at the end of New Londo Ruins. But first, a lot of people have been on me, saying, Yo dude, I heard you like mudkips. Now they said, Yo dude, you should probably get Havel's ring, or Havel's ring, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Because your uh, equipment burden is a serious issue for you right now, and that is indeed true. So we are going to do a little bit of basic, I guess we can call it maintenance, at this point. Uh, I am going to pick up a ring, which is not too far away, in fact very close. It's about where we fought the Taurus Demon, so we do have to go through the Undead Burg. But that will seem unbelievably easy in comparison to the first time we did it. Even though I'm taking way more damage than I should right now. And uh, then we will fight a guy. And he will give us his ring, which is arguably one of the more useful rings in the game. It actually increases our equipment burden by 50%. Now, normally this wouldn't be that important. Is there any... I thought that rat might drop some humanity. Uh, this wouldn't be super important because, you know, um, in a lot of games, the heavier your, your equipment doesn't necessarily change your movement speed. Your equipment burden is just there so you can't just wear, like, unbelievably heavy stuff without having a lot of stamina. Well, in uh, Dark Souls it works a little bit differently. If your equipment is below... 25% of your burden, or 50% of your burden, then you get certain movement bonuses. And the reason I want to pick this up is because this next boss that we're going to be fighting is actually pretty difficult. So I would love to have, like, the maneuverability of the armor that I'm wearing right now, but a little bit heavier of armor itself. The other thing that's going to help is the Ring of Favor and Protection, which if we look at it over here, you can see the description of it. Uh, boosts HP, stamina, and load. So it boosts our vitality, boosts our stamina a little bit, and boosts our equipment load as well, specifically, which is great. Because we'll be able to wear heavier armor while still maintaining, you know, under 50% or under 25% of our, uh, equipment burden. But Havel's Ring will also work well in conjunction with that. When it comes to, like, player versus player, and even player versus enemy builds, there's a few rings that are extremely common. One of them is Ring of Favor and Protection. Another one is Havel's Ring, or again, Havel's Ring. I'm not sure if it's ever pronounced in the game. And another one is the Dark Wood Grain Ring. And all of these are kind of related to movement speed. The uh, Dark Wood Grain Ring essentially allows you to, instead of a roll, it replaces it with a ninja flip, depending on what your equipment burden is. I, I believe depending on what your equipment burden is. It might do it regardless. And I have actually completely forgotten that I picked up this Fire Orb. So we should try that out on some enemies just to just to see how it works. Now where am I going here? I want to go up. I'll probably get burned by the dragon. I'll certainly get burned by the dragon on this bridge. Let's be honest. There we go. But it doesn't do that much damage to us again because we're leveled up. We've got more vitality. We've got more endurance. And I'm essentially just making my way back to where we fought the Taurus Demon. Which is through here on the left. It's kind of rare to come back to this area, so I forget sometimes. Okay, yes, this is where we fought the Taurus Demon. Now, this is something you can do much earlier in the game if you do have the Master Key, which, of course, we do. But, it is a little bit riskier, you could say, because uh, the guy we're about to fight, well, it's, you know, spoilers, but it's Havel himself, is actually pretty damn difficult. I mean, in the sense, he's, he's not impossible, like, his patterns are pretty easy, and he's relatively easy to block and roll around. But, he hits like a Mack truck, at least in the, the early levels, so if you're fighting him at like level 5, you may have more troubles than I will have here at level 50. Simply because he might be able to one-shot you, definitely two-shot you, and he's wearing his armor, which we picked up an episode or two ago. And he's also wielding the Dragon Tooth, which we picked up, you know, in conjunction with his armor. Now we need his ring. It's all the way down here, unfortunately. There we go. Oh lord, I forgot how big that Dragon Tooth is, it's crazy. Oh my god, the skeletons! No, no, no! <laughs> I didn't think that the skeletons would actually follow me in here. I wonder if those are the archers or they're just random guys from outside of the, uh... Uh, outside of, in the undead bird. Can I backstab him? I've never... Oh, there we go. Okay, so we can take off about, you know, a fifth of his health per backstab, which is pretty decent. But if he hits us, you saw him hit us. It took off, like... Probably 60% of our health still. So I'm just going to focus on backstabs here. I suppose I could try to parry him, but I'm not sure if maybe his dragon tooth would just go right through my parry and murder me. Havel has some interesting, uh, an interesting place in the lore as well. 
But again, if you want to find out more about the lore, I'd encourage you to watch Epic Name Bro or Quaylog's videos. Because I cannot possibly do justice to it. I just don't have enough time in the game. And I haven't spent enough time reading the item descriptions. So we're going to get rid of our Flame Stone Plate Ring and put on Havel's Ring. Which will boost our maximum equipment load. Alright. Now let's check it out. Equipment, we have 19.7 out of 126 right now. So, just doing some math quickly, we want to be around 25% of 126. So we're going to want 25 plus about another 6 and a quarter. We can be about 31 is the maximum equipment load that we can have and be under 25%. You know, more realistically, first let's use a homeward bone to get back to Firelink Shrine. Um, I've been using a lot of homeward bones recently, but I've still got a lot. You can buy those off somebody too, I just can't remember who. I think it might be the female undead merchant in uh, in that waterway on the way to Undeadburg. The shortcut that we took to Capra. Uh, let me think. So I want to I want about fifty percent of one hundred and twenty six, hundred and twenty five. I can't even remember it now. So we'll about sixty. We can put on about sixty and still have uh, still have the movement bonuses. Oh, I forgot I rested in Undeadburg. That kind of sucks. Uh, but let's change our armor. So I want about, but 63 is as high as I can get. So let's try our Silver Knight armor. And I'll put all that on, leave the Gargoyle Helm on, and see where that leaves me. That's only 36! Okay. So I can definitely put on all of the, uh, the Silver Knight armor and still have a pretty fast run speed. How's my roll, though? I, I can definitely feel myself being a little bit slower than before, but my physical defense will probably make up for it. Uh, and again, the reason we're picking this up specifically now, most people would probably pick it up a little bit earlier in the game, but um, right now I'm about to fight one of the harder bosses in the game. And essentially my strategy for fighting this boss, do I still have fast roll? Yes I do. Is uh, just to tank, basically. I'm just going to go to town on them. The boss is a little bit weak to fire, so because I'm using Quaylog's Fury Sword, and I do have a, a few extra humanity boosting its damage as well, I should be uh, doing pretty well... I should be in a situation where I can beat it basically just by tanking it, but it is going to cost me probably all of my Estus, or whatever Estus I have when I get there, and I may even have to use some humanity to heal as well, but in any case, picking up Havel's Ring, I, I prefer saying Havel to Havel, I don't know why, it just sounds, it sounds more regal, I suppose. Um, it just, uh, picking up Havel's Ring right now is pretty important because it will allow me to wear some half-decent armor. I could even go, I could wear Havel's armor, in fact, which is the, the heaviest armor in the game, I think except for Ornstein's armor, which I can't even pick up. And so it'll allow me to take some more damage. I don't want your moss lady, I want your homeward bones. There we go. How many? Okay, so she sells like unlimited home homeward bones. It's by five. How many humanities can I buy? I think she only sells one. Might as well buy one. Because humanity is a pretty scarce resource in this game. I'm pretty sure that they make that female undead merchant sell um, sell humanity because a lot of people get stuck on the Capra Demon. So they'll be like, fuck, I just ran out of humanity. They can buy one off of her. Reverse hollowing, become human, summon someone to help them beat Capra, and well, hopefully beat Capra. Otherwise, they're, they're screwed, but uh, that's a pretty good design choice. There's oftentimes in this game, although Dark Souls is sometimes unfair, even in its difficulty, although you haven't seen that much during this Let's Play because I, I've been doing fairly well, um, it, it is also pretty lenient sometimes. Like, they will, they will drop items in a place where you need them. One notable exception is when you're fighting Seath the Scaleless, which we'll see a little bit later. It's a huge asset to have an item called the Curse Bite Ring. Unfortunately, that Curse Bite Ring is found in New Londo Ruins, which is pretty much as far from the Duke's archives as you can get. I forgot about this guy. Alright, so that was our little 10 minute excursion to get Havel's Ring. You can see there's a merchant and an item over there. I will visit him. Maybe we'll wait for next time, though. Go. I was thinking I would wait and see if these guys dropped anything and pick it up, but it's almost always just like a piece of hollow soldier armor, which I have no interest in. All right. So as I mentioned like a few episodes ago, we are going to move on to the New Londo Ruins. I mean, we did like half of the New Londo Ruins a couple videos ago, but I had to stop in order to get that Covenant of Artorias. Now we're going to try to complete the whole thing, and that could make this a long episode. Do I have transient curses on my quick bar? No. Let's get rid of those purple moss clumps. Put some transient curses on here. 
10 is enough. We won't be dealing with too many ghosts in this video. We can probably get by with one transient curse. The reason being... Oh man, the number of times that I've fallen down this elevator shaft because I haven't hit this lever before I went down. Anyway. Uh, the reason for this is we're going to take a shortcut now. And the shortcut is pretty much only available after you drain the New Londo Ruins. Uh, this will allow us to get to the boss fairly quickly. The one problem with it is that it's pretty difficult. Uh, we have a little bit of an advantage, or a disadvantage, I should say, the first time we go through, because there's enemies that don't respawn. Uh, if you haven't noticed, like particularly strong enemies tend to not respawn in the game when you go to a bonfire, uh, as opposed to normal enemies which respawn, and are also still pretty difficult in their own right. So we're going to make our way down here. So we may have to f fight the enemies that don't respawn, go back to Fireling Shrine, and then come back next time. But we'll be able to see at least probably up to the fog wall of the boss. I would love to fight the boss in this video, even, even if it makes it like a 45 minute video, because I actually know it would probably be better to leave it for the next episode, because we will have to talk to uh, a very important NPC if we do succeed against the boss. Use our transient curse here so that we're uh, powerful enough, or, or I guess status effect enough to take out these ghosts. These ghosts uh, will drop their weapons, which is pretty nice, and actually makes a pretty good PvP weapon. But I'm not sure, I would, if I was going to farm for their weapons, I would probably want to have 10 humanity. As well as an item known as the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring. Do, do I... where do I want to go from here? I'm just trying to remember my, uh, my method for this area. Okay, we do want to just fall down here. And then here. And this puts us... Very close. Oh god, why? Well, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was deep water. My mistake. Might as well pick up these items too. Now here's a new enemy. This is an enemy called a Dark Wraith. So essentially these were the guys in the New Londo Ruins that made our old friend... Oh god, I've forgotten his name. The, uh, the sealer on top of that square tower that made him flood this place to protect the rest of the world. These guys dropped Titanite Chunks, which is an awesome drop which we can use to upgrade lightning weapons, as well as a few other kinds of weapons, but primarily we're going to be worried about lightning weapons for now. How do I get up there? I want whatever that item is. I think it's a humanity. Which again, always, always valuable. And I think this is the way we want to go in order to get to the next fog wall, which will be the boss. This is an extremely valuable shortcut, because again, there is no bonfire in New Londo Ruins. Oh, the cracked red eye orbs, awesome. We can use those for invasions, but we will presumably soon get the ability to buy cracked red eye orbs, or even better, uh, just an infinite invasion orb. Okay, so we gotta watch out for ghosts in here, and there will be more dark wraiths as well. Uh, this is one of the most popular farming areas in the game, simply because these dark wraiths do drop titanite chunks, which are otherwise pretty difficult to get. They also sometimes drop that cool little like black hole type shield they were using there, that's known as a dark hand. That's also an item that you get for joining the dark wraiths covenant, and this is the area that we do that. The Dark Wraiths themselves are pretty easy to fight. Uh, there will be an enemy in a second that has Vomit that will actually reduce the uh, durability of our armor and our weapon. So hopefully I don't get hit by that, otherwise I'll have to go back to a bonfire and repair before we fight the boss. But anyway, that's the, the most... Oh god, there he is! <laughs> that's the most noteworthy stuff about this area anyway. Uh, I don't want to be here because he could just immediately throw up on me. He's easy if you can just get inside. Let's try using our Fire Orb on him. Kind of against my better judgment because I would love to use this on uh, the boss himself because the boss is weak to fire. We got flaming, exploding skeleton heads. Commonly known as skulls, I suppose. What else is new? We'll see a lot of those guys in the catacombs. Which is oftentimes one of the least favorite areas in the game for a lot of people. I'm just going to chuck some fire orbs at this guy. I probably won't be able to kill him with this. I want to save my great chaos fireballs because we can use those against the boss. Pretty good effectiveness. One more, please kill him. Thank God. Okay, that guy won't respawn. More transient curses. Again, it's a huge pickup. I don't think there's another skeleton or a uh, vomit monster in here. There is another dark right though, isn't there? There he is. Okay. So we'll get him to come down here. Watch out for the floating, exploding skull because that will, uh, you know, damage me pretty substantially if I don't have my shield up. This guy's combo hits for a lot, but as long as your stamina is high, you should be able to block it all without taking any penalties. And of course, backstabs. Always be backstabbing. A, B, B. He didn't drop anything, unfortunately, so if we get rid of this floating skeleton head... Whoa, what is this? Pick up item? Where? 
Oh, more transient curses. Again, fine by me, just in case I end up spending like the rest of my entire fucking life here in New Londo Ruins. Alright, we managed to block that. I forget what's in this chest. Always be checking. APC, that was totally unintentional. To see if it's a mimic. A number of people... Oh, Titanite Chunk, awesome. A number of people have been saying, Yo, Northern Land, you don't need to check all the chests to see if... Um, to see if they're mimics. Mimics have a different looking chain. Like on a regular chest, the chain moves towards you a little bit, and on a uh, uh, what was this? on a mimic, the chain moves away from you or something like that. And all I have to say is you have fucking huge balls if you're willing to do that. I would rather just attack the chest and see what it has than be like, oh, this chest has a chain, I'm going to attack it. It takes two seconds and it makes sure that I'm probably not going to die. Now, I just realized that I'm an idiot. We are on our way to the boss fight here. But, because I'm dumb, I got Havel's Ring first without realizing that I actually needed to unequip it to equip the Covenant of Artorias to traverse the Abyss. How's our equipment load looking? Still under 50%. That's okay. I actually, with Havel's Ring, I could probably wear uh, Havel's Armor. Like Havel's Ring plus Covenant of Artorias. But if I take off Havel's, if I take off the Ring of Favor and Protection, then we're done. Like, I, I lose that ring. So let's heal up here, and then we are going to drop down into the next area, and the boss fight should start basically immediately. This is a scary drop, but I promise you we will survive. So the boss we're going to be fighting, known as the Four Kings. I guess longer name, the Four Kings of New Londo. My strategy for them is basically shit my pants and attack as hard as I can, and just tank the damage. Okay, so basically the way this works, there's like four ghosts. And they're going to respawn one, they're going to spawn one at a time, which is fantastic. And we're just going to go to town on them. If we can kill one, oh, get out of there. That hurts. If we can kill one before the other one spawns, we'll be in a great position. Because we can just take them out one at a time, which is way better than having to take them all out at once. And we're only going to heal when we get quite low, which we probably will be after this one. And I really need this guy to die quickly, because he's not dying quickly. Oh god, this is the second one behind him. Murder him! Murder him! You are not close enough to be... Okay, he's dead. Pyromancer's Flame. Great Chaos Fireball. 397 damage, that's pretty good. What did that, like, deflect off his sword? Gotta heal. May end up having to use some humanity for this. That's okay. I, I just picked up a bunch. Okay, use your great Chaos Fireball, man. It's going alright. Not going great, but going alright. Heal, heal with your Estus Blast, that's what it's there for. Okay, we're back up to full. The next king has spawned. Where is he? There he is. Okay. Still timing on this is totally okay. I'm almost out of stamina. Really should have popped some uh, grass before we got into this fight. I hate that move so much. Do I have humanity on my quick bar? Thankfully, yes. Oh man, this could be close though. This guy's gotta die before uh, before we can really think about popping that humanity. Let's go. Back. Oh god, heal, heal, heal. The other, the other guy's back already. Or created already. It would have been awesome if I killed that guy before that that came out. Do it! Do it! Oh god, okay. Pop a humanity quick. Now go back to Estus. We only have one. Where's this other four king? Or the fourth king. Okay, we may actually succeed here. There's only one of them left. Again, they hit like a fucking Mack truck, but oh well. I think we're gonna win. Uh, fuck it. Let's pop this Estus. And let's pop a humanity. Better safe than sorry. Again, if I don't die, I get to keep that humanity. Did I lose humanity at some point? Just attack! Just murder him! He's almost dead! There we go. Okay, we actually succeeded in killing the four kings on the first try. Not a common result where I come from. But that's cool. I'm happy about that. Alright, so we got our first Lord Soul. We'll talk about those in a minute. Hey, look at that! We got a serpent over there. Surprisingly, we don't have to murder this guy. This guy's actually a, a friendly, sort of, NPC. And we're gonna have to do a lot of dialogue with him. But because we did things in a very specific order, he is uh, going to allow us to enter another covenant. And probably my favorite covenant in the game. And a covenant that is gonna allow us to see a lot of PvP. So that's pretty awesome. Let's talk to him and then we'll enter the covenant. Then it'll be the end of the episode. 
He's going to give us a lot of story, by the way. Greetings, undead warrior. I am the primordial serpent, Darkstalker Khan. I can guide thee and illuminate the truth. The truth I shall share without sentiment. After the advent of fire, the ancient lords found the three souls, but your progenitor found a fourth, unique soul, the Dark Soul. Your ancestor claimed the Dark Souls and waited for fire to subside, and soon the flames did fade and only dark remained. Thus began the Age of Men, the Age of Dark. However, Lord Gwyn trembled at the dark, clinging to his age of fire and in dire fear of humans, and the Dark Lord who would one day be born amongst them. Lord Gwyn resisted the course of nature by sacrificing himself to link the fire and commanding his children to shepherd the humans. Gwyn has blurred your past to prevent the birth of the Dark Lord. I am the primordial serpent. I seek to right the wrongs of the past, to discover our true lord. But the other serpent, Frampt, lost his sense and befriended Lord Gwyn. Undead warrior, we stand at a crossroads. Only I know the truth about your fate. You must destroy the fading Lord Gwyn, who has coddled fire and resisted nature, and become the fourth Lord, so that you may usher in an age of dark. Ah, uh, my decision is yes. I would love to be the Very Dark Lord. Well. I shall now guide you to Gwyn's prison. Be still, and trust thine flesh to me. <clears throat> and you think they smell bad on the outside? upon the altar. I will do as you say, Lord Katha. Alright, so having placed the Lord Vessel, all of these areas that were previously inaccessible to us will now become accessible. I know you haven't seen any of those glowing doors yet, but I promise you, you would have if I tried to get somewhere where I was not allowed to go yet. Alright, so we can use the Lord Vessel as a bonfire. We can warp to and away from it. But let's just go talk to Koth again, and he will take anyway, us back to the Abyss. Once the vessel is filled with souls... The gate to Gwyn shall open. Seek Gravelord Nito, the Witch of Isolith, and the traitor Seath the Scaleless. Fill this vessel with their souls. Then the gate will open so that you may kill Gwyn. Are you ready? Then let us return to the Abyss. And trust 
thine flesh to me. God, dude, invest in an elevator, please. This is getting ridiculous. Alright, we're going to continue talking to Kath for a second here, uh, because he will allow us to enter his covenant. Ah, if you wish, I shall grant the art of life drain, the legendary power of the Dark Lord. It can preserve your humanity while undead, and cast off the shackles placed upon your brethren. Alright, so we'll enter his covenant, obviously. Covenant is known as the Dark Wraiths. This gives us an item called the Dark Hand. We can use this as a shield, or we can use it as a weapon. And the cool thing about using it as a weapon is its heavy attack, its right trigger, or its R2, will allow you to steal humanity from anybody who has it, if it lands on them. Uh, useful for taking humanity from NPCs, because you can do it without getting aggro from them a lot of the time. Alright, and now also, we can ask for a Covenant item, which will allow us to buy Cracked Red Eye Orbs from him. As you can see right here, this is useful because normally these things uh, are inaccessible. There's about ten of them, I think, scattered throughout the game. Four in Firelink Shrine and the six that I just got in this video. Uh, but being able to buy them is awesome. To the point where I'm actually going to buy 25 of them. I'm going to spend all my souls on them. Uh, this will allow me to do invasions. Each one is worth one invasion. But the other thing is we can offer humanity. And if we offer him ten humanity, he'll give us an item known as the Red Eye Orb, which allows infinite invasions. So we will be seeing some PvP at some point. Farewell. Alright, so we're going to light this bonfire now. That I can do it safely without aggra aggravating this guy. I believe. I'm not sure how it would have worked the other way. We're going to warp back to Firelink Shrine. And that will be the end of this video. This was way more content than I expected to get in in one video. That's awesome. And although a lot of it was not me talking, that's okay with me. Now, we have a few options for where we can go. You notice he mentioned three bosses. He mentioned Gravelord Nido. He mentioned Seath the Scaleless and the Witch of Isolith. So there's three areas we can go to. Catacombs, Tomb of the Giants. That's one area for this consideration. Duke's Archives and Crystal Caves. Or Lost Isolith and the Demon Ruins. I'm not sure where we're going to go next, actually. I didn't pick up the Curse Bite Ring, so Duke's, Ar Duke's Archives could be kind of difficult, actually. First things first. Let's make sure I do this now so I don't forget to do it in the next episode. We'll get rid of the Covenant of Artorias. Put on our Havel's Ring. Could wear heavier armor now. Let's see what the Crestfallen Warrior has to say. Did you ring the second bell? Yeah, like ten that hours ago. I must say. But now we have a new problem. It's noisy, it snores, and its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. Now, he is talking, I should probably mention this, because it's important for the story. He's talking about this dragon guy through here. You can sort of see him. Uh, this is Frant. He's the quote-unquote light serpent. But it's best not to talk to him if you want to get the dark ending. At least don't talk to him after you get the Lord Vessel and Orlando. And now I'm going to be like, hey, friends, what's up, buddy? How you doing? And he's going to be like, I don't think you're a good guy. You could not be the chosen one. Enough. I shall slumber until I am awakened again. Alright, fuck you too, buddy. This is a shortcut, by the way, that we can use to take uh, two... Firelink Altar, which is where we place the Lord Vessel. Let's see if Laurentius has any new dialogue for us. How you doing, buddy? Oh, hello there. I'm pleased to see you safe. As always, if you provide the materials, I can teach you pyromancy. So I guess the answer to that question is no. Let's just rest at this bonfire. I will end this episode and see you next time when I will decide which direction to go on. Well, that was a good episode. We beat Havel and we beat New Lano Ruins. Got the first of the Lord Soul Shards that we're going to have to place in the Lord Vessel. And also, uh, entered the Dark Red Covenant, which is probably my favorite covenant in the game. Means we'll be seeing a lot of PvP in the future. Maybe not tomorrow. Have patience. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.